Jalen Brunson scored 39 points in three quarters as New York beat the Boston Celtics 118 to 109 and kept up their quest to finish with the number two seed in the Eastern Conference. The Knicks pulled within a game of the Bucks for second with each team having two games remaining. Jalen Brown gave his thoughts on what went wrong for the Celtics. Take a listen. What I would say is that we just got out tough the last two games. Um, we haven't played to our standard. A turn to physicality. The game has shifted a little bit, and it's going to shift even more in the playoffs. All right, Perk, I'm going to start with you on this point. Do you have any concern about the Celtics' toughness? Hell yeah, I do. Hell yeah, I do. And look, Joe Mazzulla, he could go in the post-game interviews, and he could try to downplay it as much as he want, but the concern level is high. Okay, the, and the, the word is out about the Boston Celtics. You get into them, you make them uncomfortable, you close out, you pound the offensive glass, you're going to have a shot at beating them. And look, again, the Celtics season start April the 20th. No one is watching the Celtics right now, although they have the best record in the league. They have 60-plus wins. But we want to see what they do when it matters the most. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to point at one particular individual when it comes to the Celtics. Christoph Przingis. And yes, I understand he's been phenomenal this season. He's number one in the league in post-ups. I get that. He's done an excellent job of protecting the basket. I get that. But can he hold up throughout a postseason, through four seven-game series, and help the Celtics hang another banner? Those are the question marks because he's going to have his battles, whether that's against Joel Embiid, if Giannis comes back. Like, and then when you move on to the Western Conference, we know. We, we predicting that maybe Jokic is going to see him. Like, can Kristaps Porzingis be healthy in four seven-game series but right now, the word is out about the Celtics that all you have to do is get into them. All you have to do is make the game close. Don't let them run away with the game because we know how horrible they've been in late game moments, and especially Jason Tatum, one of the worst in far as closing out games, one of the worst in far as game time or game winning field goals. So at the end of the day, they have a lot of question marks. I understand they've been running through the Eastern Conference. They have the best record in the East. But let's be real. The East is no is no comparison to what the Western Conference is. So, Perk, I think you're right to be concerned. My level of concern is not as high when it comes to the Celtics. Uh, I just been in the arena last night. The sentiment was they've clinched. They've been comfortable for a while. They were due for this sort of performance. And the New York Knicks. That's three, three wins, playing really good basketball, wins versus Milwaukee, Chicago. They were sort of in rhythm, and that's something that they're focused on gearing up toward the playoffs. I agree with you in terms of the Porzingis assessment, but I think this year's team, the addition of Drew Holiday, who just signed a four-year uh, deal and is going to be in Boston for the foreseeable future, gives them a level of toughness. And frankly, Perk, and when you, we have the conversation about revving up and the opportunity to start the season strong on April 20th, if they somehow run into Miami... I think that's the biggest opportunity for them to think revenge and want to get back from what happened last year. And so I will say that last night was not a game in which they were intentionally resting guys. They started their starters. Them starters played about two and a half quarters, I would say. I think when they couldn't close the gap in that third quarter, then Joe Mazzulla waved the white flag, so to speak, and their second unit came in and made a push versus the Knicks' second unit. Um, the best indicator of future success is past success. And so I understand the hesitancy. My level of concern is not as high because I just think these guys have grown. And I really, really like the addition of Drew Holiday. And then Tupac, Derek White, who was a guy that I know you called a very sneaky addition at the trade deadline two years ago, has come along for this group as well. My concerns when it comes to the Boston Celtics start with shot selection, especially when you're playing against teams that can equal out against you. Now, it's not many of those right now in the NBA, but when you do run up against one, shot selection has killed this team. It did against the Denver Nuggets when they played them twice this season. It happened last year in the playoffs because the bad shot selection leads to easy points for your opponent. For sure. And then also ball movement, right? When the ball gets stagnant in one person's hands and they're going one-on-one -on -one so much, I really don't like that when, the, when it comes to Boston. They live by the three, die by the three. And then lastly, late game situations. Is that going to come up to creep, creep, creep up uh, on them at some point that doesn't allow them to advance in a series or advance uh, in the manner that they want to and make it an NBA championship? Because me, for me, for the Celtics, it's championship or bust. It's no, we got to the NBA Finals and we lost it. Man, we got close. No, they've already yeah. been there. They, 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 they was up 
two games versus the Golden State Warriors. They did not win that series. They've been knocking on the door for a long time. It's time to open that bad boy, yeah. and it's time to bring a title back to Boston. Last time that happened, KP was on the staff. Big person. me on the team. <laughs> And, and see, the problem that I have is this, right? Even about the game last night. Oh, they already clinched. Guys guys probably wasn't fully engaged. They go turn it on. You know, everyone is making excuses. More excuses for the Celtics than a brother going to jail. And that's a problem for me. At the end of the day, this is not a team that is based on winning the Eastern Conference. Harry just talked about this. The Celtics, it's championship or bust. It's no other team in the league that is under the pressure of the Boston, like the Boston Celtics. When it comes down to Jason Tatum, he's under probably the most pressure, in my opinion. I, him and Giannis are neck to neck, but when it comes down to the front office and the ownership of the Celtics, they have done everything and more to make sure every single year that Jason Tatum have the necessary pieces around them. We talk about when they went and got Derek White, what, about two years ago. We talk about when they traded for Drew Holiday this year, traded for Kristaps Przingis. Now, all of a sudden, everyone has been saying all year long that the Celtics have the best starting five in basketball. With that being said, it's no, oh, you're going to get out of, uh, when they get to the East and represent. No, 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 no. We're talking about them completing the mission. And then right now, if you're asking me if they face up with the Denver Nuggets in the, in the finals, which possibly could happen, most likely is going to happen, I don't have trust in the Celtics or faith in the Celtics that they could beat the Nuggets in the seven-game series. It's, it's everything, Monica. Like, okay, I'm just asking. people been saying that the Celtics, look, a lot of people, a lot of our colleagues have been saying the Celtics have the best starting five in basketball. But in reality, you know who has the best starting five in basketball? It's the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets. You know who are, you know who is you know who is 0-2 right now against the uh the Nuggets, the Boston Celtics. Celtics. I mean, when you talk about Jokic and you talk about stopping him, the best player in the league, it's a concern level there. When you look at the physicality that the Nuggets play with, it's a level of concern. When you look at Jamal Murray in the two-man game and what they're capable of doing, it's a level of concern. And when it comes down to being in the clutch, do you trust Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown or do you trust Jamal Murray and Jokic if they match up in the finals? Damn it, I'm going with big fella and Murray. Okay, that loss snapped a 13-game win streak at home for the Boston Celtics. By the way, uh, the, the Boston Celtics' last home loss to an Eastern Conference team in the regular season was March 5th, 2023. Do you know who they lost to, Monica? In the regular season, I don't know. It was the Knicks. Oh. <laughs> it was the Knicks. I'm like, first of all, it's a whole bunch of numbers. I don't know. You're like, I don't know what you just said. What, okay. what are we talking about? Uh, Monica, I'm going to ask you this. Are Brunson and the Knicks a legit threat to the boss, to Boston in the East? Yes, they are. Um, of course, I think there we're keeping we an eye out for Philadelphia if Joel Embiid is healthy. But what Jalen Brunson has been able to do, y'all, it has flown a little bit under the radar since Julius Randle has gone down. And remember, OG Ananobi is, is recently back, relatively so. But Jalen Brunson kicking it up to averaging 37 points a game when Julius Randle went down. The way that he is able to pace this team, get to his spot, despite seeing taller defenders with tremendous length, quick feet, double teams, he is in such control. And then, right, while I know people might look at this roster and say, oh, there's no other star, the guys that he are, is playing with are absolute stars in their roles, which is essential to any team's success. Dante DiVincenzo is shooting a basketball at Steph Curry levels this season. Josh Hart, no matter where this team goes, despite being a guy who you can't always anticipate or predict what the stat line might look like, you know it's going to basically say energy in a guy that was all over the floor, willing to defend, willing to rebound, and making the right pass. The emergence of Isaiah Hardenstein as someone who's now looking at the rim that you have to play honestly in the two-man game with Jalen Brunson has been an addition that has helped this team grow. And of course, OG Ananobi, 18-3 and three when he's on the floor, plus minus is all over the place. And so the guys around Jalen Brunson, while they may not be tremendous shot creators for themselves or others, they are stars in their roles and they play alongside him so well. And so to me, in an Eastern Conference where everybody's navigating something, whether it's injuries, um, team chemistry, whatever you want to put it on, 
The Knicks, when they say find a way, they've got guys that are all pulling in the same direction, and I think it's showing. So, yes, they are a legitimate threat to the Celtics. Monica, I think one of the things a lot of people underestimate when it comes to the New York Knicks, Perk, you as well, um, is the fact that you have a, a Jalen Bronson, a DiVincenzo, a Josh Hart that played together in college mm -hmm. in their chemistry. And how close they are at one another, I think it's really affected this basketball team in a massive way. Mm -hmm. But now when you talk about a Jalen Brunson, a guy that's 6'2 and under, playing amongst trees, but every time them lights turn on, he has never let you down. That part. You talk about since March, the multiple 30-point games, 40-point games, 60-point mm -hmm. games, being able to live up to the bill, live up to the billing, being in New York, being in the spotlight. But when them lights shine in the biggest matchups, Jalen Brunson is going to give you everything that you, that you can handle. And then we see how they are on the defensive side of the ball. It was inexcusable, in my opinion, for the, for the Celtics last night to let them out-rebound them and outscore them in the paint. That also lets me know that the Boston Celtics, they rely too much on three-pointers. Mm -hmm. When you have guys that, that can, you know, create mismatches and you're just constantly shooting these threes, but for the New York Knicks... You better bring your hard hat and your lunch pail. Come on They're going to give you minutes of hell every yeah. time that you out there on the basketball Come court. Come on now. You, you know what's crazy is about three weeks ago I was on this show and I said that Jalen Brunson is the best point guard in the league. And I was called everything but a child of God for saying that. And then all of a sudden he started taking his game to another level. And all I keep hearing whether it's on this network or that network, is that, you know, Jalen Brunson, he would never be the – he's not – you know, the Knicks never have the first or second best player on the floor. And every time he goes against another person's favorite player, he comes out victorious in great fashion. So when I'm looking at this Knicks team, what do they have? They have culture – and they have an identity on both ends of the floor. When it comes to being a game changer and a game manager, Jalen Bronson is both of those. Whatever you want, he's a closer. Now when you look at the inside with Mitchell Robinson coming in off the bench, Isaiah Hardenstein, what he's able to do, out of even when they try to trap uh, Jalen Bronson and he's getting to that short row, being able to spray out to corners, uh, for the shooters or get that little float action in the middle of the paint. And I can't sing enough praises about OG Ananobi. He's probably the most disrespected player in the game. Matter of Ooh. fact, he's the mm. best role player in the league. Best 3 and D guy. What he brings to the table, you cannot replace. It's a reason why Toronto set the bar so high for us, what they wanted for OG. And we're seeing it right now with the effect that he has had on the Knicks since he put on the Knicks uniform. And I end with this. Mm. For me, Jalen Brunson has been the best player in the Eastern <laughs> Conference <laughs> this season. Uh, yeah. He Talk has, to him. He's averaging 38 and a half points in his last eight Talk games, which him. is the second most in Knicks history, now. trailing only Bernard King. <laughs>